This is Dolany TV, and welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel today, guys. Rocking one of my favorite throwback logos of all time in the NHL. One of the logos that first struck me as really that's how they would do their logo in the professional sports world back in 0506 when I got into hockey myself as a young nine year old. Well, guess what? It's the Kachina for the Arizona Coyotes. Guys, if you've followed the channel long enough, you know all about my kind of little bit of fandom going on for the Arizona Coyotes based on all the stuff I have brought up from Arizona every time my mom goes down there to, for a visit with one of her friends. However, the reason I start off with something a favorite of mine, a something kind of like a growing favorite, right? Something that keeps growing as a favorite thing of mine. Well, the reason I do that is because us as Oilers fans, we got this seven game sample at the beginning of the year when the team really wasn't sure what the heck they were going to do to fill out Andre Secker's spot in the lineup. We got a seven game sample of somebody who is absolutely 110% destroyed not only the OHL but the OHL playoffs so far this year in a man that we drafted 10th overall last draft so you guys want to say oh we should have tanked for a higher pick there's nothing good in the 10th pick well guess what 10th overall we got a guy who fell to us don't get me wrong yes I know he fell to us in Evan Bouchard and Evan Bouchard is a guy who if you're a kind of Oilers prospect watcher he's a growing favorite he's a guy who's going to grow into and grow as a favorite for a lot of Oilers fans whether it's start next year whether it be the year after whether a kid get into hockey when Evan Bouchard's 25 and the captain of this team you know what I mean yeah I understand where I'm going I mean not to throw conspiracy theories that Connor McDavid will be gone in seven years time but just sit there and realize that Evan Bouchard is the kind of material you're looking for in a player to lead a team. We've seen that all throughout his career. He was the captain in London last year. He's the captain in London this year. He was an A on the U20 WJC World Junior Championship team, well, in December, January. So let's not kid ourselves. This kid's got great qualities about him as a number 10 overall pick. Now the reason I'm getting excited about this is today we got to, I'm going to discuss and we got to figure out in the comments section between all of us kind of what the best plan for Evan Bouchard going forward into next year and throughout the season is. I've thrown around a couple of ideas. The Edmonton Journal had another post out today and this is where my topic idea kind of fluctuated in my head a little bit is is they were discussing the Oilers' management aspect of over-ripening prospects, right? Finally getting it right and taking our time with guys. So, obviously, you've seen this kind of development with a guy like Darnell Nurse before, sending him back to junior the way the Oilers did with Evan Bouchard. Maybe the right call, most likely the right call. Bouchard had 53 points in 45 games down there in the OHL and now has 20 points in 10 games with the London Knights in the OHL playoffs. Well, this is the fun part. He's playing with Adam Boquist. Guys, if you followed the channel before switching to Oilers coverage daily, well, obviously you'd know who Adam Boquist is. But we don't need to get into that tonight because we need to sit here and, like I said, figure out a plan for Evan Bouchard. My plan that I kind of had was start him in the AHL, figure him out, and then uh, bring him up to the NHL when the roster kind of solidifies after the first five, six, seven games, just as it did when Evan Bouchard was sent down this year. Now, there are a couple of good merits to doing that, right? Obviously, you don't expose him to the NHL game, but the, the thing is, you sit there and say, I don't want to expose him to the NHL game right to start the year. I want to build his confidence, let him score a couple of points, let him get into the ebbs and flows and rhythm of the game, and then bring him up and let him dominate. Well, he already did that last year. That's where my whole point on that gets defeated is because he did that last year. So now we have to sit and okay, well, if he did that last year, is he going to be ready to start in the NHL next season? And that's, that's where the best plan comes in place is the Oilers have to have this whole overarching theme of making the team better while doing addition, subtraction, call-ups, send-downs, and figuring out what this team looks like going into 2019-2020.
And the guy you cannot ignore on the back end is, of course, Evan Bouchard. But where do you find room for him? Obviously, you probably don't bring back Kevin Gravel. Fine, dandy. But do you really see Evan Bouchard, the way he's blossomed since, well, you know what, even before being drafted, do you see him being a 6th, 7th, 5th, 4th defender on this team even starting next year? I don't. I absolutely don't. I see Evan Bouchard being a top pairing defenseman with Oscar Kleffbaum. That sounds nuts. I don't like the sounds of that coming out of my own mouth, but it makes absolute perfect sense because we've seen what happened this year. It just didn't work out having the Kleffbaum Larson pairing. Obviously, Larson at the best of times look, looked exposed. Yes, he had a down year, but that's why you don't expose him for the same purpose next season. Uh, like, if you follow my theory here, it's the same thing as Cam Talbot going into this past season, this season that was a failure for the Oilers, after a season that was a complete failure for him personally. Well, you literally start him as the starting goalie last season, and then this season you start him again expecting, ah, oh, you know what, he's fixed it, we didn't change anything on our end, he figured it out, he's good, and then we got this crap miserable poor goaltending from Cam Talbot all over again. Well, huh, gee, what went wrong? Well, obviously, just sitting there not waking yourself up to the stupidity of trying the same thing again and thinking it'll be different results, the insanity theory, well, that is as simple as it goes. So with Evan Bouchard, you get a chance to look at the roster a different way. Now, yes, are you expecting what will be uh, not even going into, not even going into the start of next season, a 20-year-old. He'll still be 19 going into next season, right? He won't turn 20 till October 20th. Well, oh my goodness. Am I really sitting here gambling on him being a top-pairing defenseman? Well, that's where uh, you got to sit here and realize what he's been doing, right? I've given you the stats. The stats make perfect sense that he is capable of doing it. But do you want to expose him? You exposed him last year. Is it fair to do it again this year? But to do it right, you have to do it right. And I honestly see him as a top pairing defenseman with Oscar Clefbaum. Now, that if you're going with that as your best plan, essentially what you're saying is Oscar Clefbaum is the defensive anchor on that line. Not saying Bouchard at six foot two, whatever, 198. He'll probably be six three. 199 or 210 going into next year if he's going to be on the defense core for the Oilers. Well, not saying that he's not defensively sound or that he can't play defense. What I'm saying is you have to look at it this way, and Oilers fans have to keep it in mind as well if that's the way the Oilers end up going, is he's a 19-year-old kid. Yes, he's flashy. Yes, he's a top pick. Yes, he looks good. Yes, he has the tools. But we have to be patient all around as an organization and fan base. That's again why I don't like it coming out of my mouth is because the patience needs to be there. Going back to the Oilers, Edmonton Oilers uh, discussion on the Edmonton Journal today about over ripening prospects. To a degree with defensemen that's always the way it should go. But can you really afford that with Evan Bouchard who looks like an absolute sure thing to help this roster score from the back end next year. Obviously, it's the same theory as what Colorado's going through now with Kale McCarr coming in for the playoff run. I single-handedly believe an offensive defenseman who plays a flashy style can win that series for the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, you're going to say Nate McKinnon's going to do it handily himself. Don't forget what a guy like Kale McCarr can bring or a guy like Evan Bouchard. And yes, okay, a little bit apples to oranges with Evan Bouchard and Kale McCarr, sure. But there's some similarities in the game that make the dynamic differences for both teams. So don't uh, don't count it out till it happens, kind of deal. So with Evan Bouchard, uh, what's plan number three? Plan number three, you bring him up and you just have him on the second pair with either Nurse or Clef, uh, Nurse or Larson, Nurse or Russell. Or you know what I mean? A couple of guys. There's three or four guys you could throw around there. Bring them up and play them with Sakura. Uh, there's a couple of good options, but you have to figure out the defense. And obviously, if you're not using them as a top pairing defenseman, you're going to have to part with a guy like 
Matt Benning, Kevin Gravel, maybe even Chris Russell or Andre Sekra, and that plays back into my start of the narration of this video in which I said it's all about figuring out what the shape of next season's roster looks like. So basically what I'm asking for is your best thoughts on what should be done with Evan Bouchard going into next year, but also we have to sit here and remind ourselves a new GM is going to have a fresh perspective, a different take, and something to help us out. And is that something, doing something to get Evan Bouchard into a successful place in the lineup? Or is it keeping him in the minors until he's ready to come up for an injury and take over? Obviously, it's the Oilers. There's going to be injuries on the back end. There's going to be someone down for a long time. And Evan Bouchard, if he ripens down in the AHL and comes up and absolutely dominates, that looks good on the player development side of things. But is it the way the Oilers are going to go? Is that the best plan? Or is plan B, plan A, plan 1, 2, 3 the best plan? I'm not sure. That's where I really want to gauge it because I've had a couple of good ideas on what to do with Evan Bouchard. And as the Kachina grows on me, so does Evan Bouchard. And I'm sure he's done it on you as the OHL season has progressed and you've heard rumblings about what he's doing. But I want to see what your thoughts on the best plan for Evan Bouchard as an Edmonton Oiler moving forward after this year in the next year is. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I'm Tyson the Stolen TV. Thank you so much for tuning in to a little bit different style of a discussion today as we like to call it. Guys, I am up on out of here.